This game is brought to you by Pyatt's Bakery in Perrysburg. Tonight, the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets meet the Lake Flyers. Tonight's game is brought to you by Cash Myers Five Star Markets. Gene Richard and Sons Tires, Toledo Auto Electric, Open Pantry, and the Dixie Electric Company. And now, live and direct from Perrysburg High School, here's WSPD Sports Director Jerry Kyle. Welcome to tonight's game between the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets and the Lake Flyers. Jerry Kyle here along with Tom Gatto. And let me remind you, this is WSPD Toledo, 1370 on your dial, your station for sports. And very quickly right now, let us get over to Tom Gatto because this game is just a couple of minutes away. Okay, Jerry, Perrysburg won the toss. Lake will kick off, kick off and defend the West Goal. Let me give you the Perrysburg starting lineup. At center, four Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. Dave Tiggis, a senior. At the guards, Gary Wilson and Brian Rehard. At the tackles, Todd Hansen and Rudy Zyler. Hansen's a sophomore, Zyler a junior. Wilson and Rehard are, so are senior and sophomore, respectively. At tight end, three-year starter, Stan Dennis, a senior, and also captain. The split end is Keith Tamarine, a sophomore. At quarterback, Terry Roush, a junior. Starting at tailback for Perrysburg, Rick Nickel, a junior. The fullback, number 42, and a senior, Jim Priest. The wingback, Greg Heilman, a senior. For the Lake Flyers. Using a split six defense, the front four for Lake Flyers at the end. Emmett Reha and the tackles, Mike Baker and Jim Sauter. At the linebackers, Tom McDaniels, Rick Ackenberger, Steve Hornyak, Gary and Henderson. Henderson will be the outside linebacker to the tight end. McDaniels will be the outside linebacker to the split end. The three deep for uh, the Lake Flyers, Mark Patton is the left corner. The free safety is Todd Greenlease. And the right corner is Todd Marks, Mark Patton's uh, younger brother, Rick Patton, who is a sophomore. Patton, of course, is the fine senior for the Lake Flyers who's a uh, four-year uh, four starter for the Flyers. Jerry, we've got uh, always an exciting contest here, even though Perrysburg is one and three coming into this contest, and Lake is three and one. But when the NLL uh, gets it cranked up, the fur always flies. Okay, Tom, in just a moment, we'll have tonight's opening kickoff, but right now, let's take time out and hear this message. Back in 1941, when you weren't in the mood to dance, then you were probably out admiring your new DeSoto and the good set of tires you got for it at Gene Richards' new tire shop in Toledo. 
You know, a lot of people started out with Gene Richard and have stayed with him because they knew they didn't have to worry about getting good service from Gene, and you didn't have to worry too much about gas savings then either. Well, today it's Gene Richard and Sons Tire at 21st and Monroe Streets. And today you do have to save fuel. While Gene and his sons don't have any hard and fast solutions to America's energy problems, you can equip your car with quality Michelin X radial tires. Performance proven tires that can help you save 5 to 8% on fuel over bias ply tires, depending on the way you drive. Michelin's America's choice for tire value. And Gene Richard and Sons has fuel saving Michelins in stock at prices you can afford. Gene Richard and Sons Tire. Leave your car and they'll take you to and from work. For Michelin's, it's Gene Richard and Sons Tire. 21st and Monroe Streets. Kicking off for the Lake Flyers will be Hammersmith and deep to receive for the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets will be Reason, Brzezinski, and Nickel. All right, the Lake Flyers will be in their white jerseys, the blue pants, and here's the kickoff down to the 30-yard line where it's picked off there at the 30 to the 35, 40, 45, and finally across the 45 to about the 49-yard line goes Brzezinski. And he is finally brought down there on a good tackle by number 64, Dave Schaefer. So Tom, an excellent run back and a first down and 10 yards to go now for Perrysburg with the ball resting at their own 48. Good field position for the Yellow Jackets. The Yellow Jackets have really fallen upon some hard times uh, opening the season, beating Genoa 14-7. Seeing their win streak uh, snapped by Eastwood, we'll get back to that shortly. Split backs, and there is a handoff straight ahead. Raising the ball carrier, and he gets it over the 50 to about the 48-yard line of Lake, where he is brought down there. And on the uh, tackle was Ryers for Lake. So there's a pickup on the play from the 48-yard line of Perrysburg across the 50 to the 48 of Lake. A gain on the play of about four yards. It'll be second down and six. Rush is your quarterback. We have Nickel in there. And one of the setbacks, there's a handoff straight ahead over the right side this time is Nickel. And Nickel gets it to about the 46-yard line. He's brought down there. And on the uh, tackle was Cook. Nickel it's just shy of the 45-yard line. Let's call it the 45 right there and make it third down now at about three. Third and three. Perrysburg will alternate Keith Tamarine and uh, Dave Stanford at that split end, Jerry. And also alternate uh, Greg Heilman in there. They line up in a slot left, Perrysburg moving left to right on your dial. Roush is the quarterback, a man in motion to the right. And we've got a legal procedure right here on number 62 of the Jackets as he moved prematurely. That's Randy Seller. And again, in high school town, they do not have to uh, make contact. As soon as that in motion comes, they'll throw the flag and they'll walk off five. Jerry, as I mentioned, Perrysburg beat you know, 14 to 7 to start the season off on a good note. Uh, then they fell upon hard times, losing to Eastwood uh, 15 to 14, to DeVille was 15 to 14, and last week to Springfield uh, 14 to 7. Those two losses early, uh, first two losses, came in the last minute of play. Back to throw the football. Wow, she's in trouble. He is sacked. Back at the 41 yard line. Excellent defensive play by Earl. Sparks. Sparks on the tackle, number 65, and that'll bring up a fourth down and long now. Fourth and long. And back to punt for Perrysburg will be Dave Stanford, who is a junior. And deep to receive for the Lake Flyers will be Mark Patton, and the up man will be Todd Greenlease. He's back at the 30 to punt it. The deep man is at the 20. The snap, the kick is away. Low spiral. Gets at the 25. Picked up, and his knee touched the ground. His knee touched the ground right there at the 22-yard line. Obviously no run back. Rick Patton. Now, he's the one to watch for late. 9.36 to go first quarter. There's no score. Perrysburg in their gold helmets, the black jerseys, gold pants, gold numerals. The Lake Flyers in their blue helmets, the blue pants, the white jerseys. Okay, for a Lake on offense, Todd Greenlease is a split end. Gary Henderson is the tight end. In the backfield, Brian Pennington, a sophomore, tailback Mark Patton, a senior. Rick Ackenberger is a senior at fullback. And 
and Rick Fant will be a, a halfback or flanker for the Lake Flyers. They run out of the wishbone tee, and a handoff over the right side goes Pat Patton, the ball carrier, and he gets it. Patton carries. From the 23-yard line out to the 25, a gain of two on the play. It'll be second down and eight. We'll see uh, Lake running out of the wishbone as well as the eye formation. And, uh, of course, this will be uh, important for Perrysburg to figure out uh, just how to defense those two power formations that Lake has. Sigs on the tackle. Rick Patton now split out wide to the left. They have an eye in the backfield. Pennington calling signals. And he pitches here to Pat, 25, 30, 35. Still running it out to the 40-yard line goes Pat. And he's finally brought down there by Keith Tamarine, number one. Well, that time, Jerry, Perrysburg gave him a six-man line. And uh, Mark Patton taking the handoff from Pennington, cut back against the grain, a, a gaping hole in the middle of that six-man line, and picked up the first down. It's going to probably give it to Patton all night, uh, Tom. That's oh, He's the workhorse. He's been a workhorse for four years uh, for these late flyers. Mark Patton, he is a tailback right now. Ackenberger is the fullback. Pennington, the quarterback, at the 39-yard out of Lake. There is a hand of a fullback at nowhere, absolutely nowhere. Glenn Schroeder on the tackle for the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. Outstanding job. Also down there, helping out was Dave Tiggs once again. The ball right there at the 39-yard line of Lake, where it is second down and 10, no gain. 7.30 to go, first quarter, no score. Perrysburg is in a rebuilding situation, Jerry, on offense. They only have one uh, returning starter, that is Stan Dennis. Defensively, they've got Stan Dennis and John Swede. So uh, almost a whole new ball club for the Yellow Jackets. We have twin flankers out wide to the left eye in the backfield. Here's Rick Patton straight ahead, 40 to the 44-yard line. And he is hauled down there. Boy, he hits that hole in a great big hurry, I'll tell you that. First man there to get him was Swede, another one of the Swede boys for Perrysburg. They'll spot the football at the Lake High School 44-yard line, where it is now third down about six. Third and six. Nice trap block by the right guard, Bob Abbey, who will open up a large hole for Mark Patton. They break out of it now, and out wide of the right goes Rick Patton. Eye in the backfield, open field is to the right, or the east. There is the draw play to Patton, 45-50, and slips down under his own power at the 47-yard line. He's clamped down there by Tom Brzezinski. He made sure he went no further, but he went down actually under his own power. And so they'll spot the ball, Tom, at the Perrysburg 47-yard line, where it is now first and 10 for the Lake Flyers with six minutes remaining, first quarter, no score. One of the best plays out of the I formation is the tailback draw in a passing situation, good blocking up front by Baker, Rehaz, and Abbey in the middle of that lake line. Pennington barking out the signals. He's got him in the eye formation once again, and he gives to Ackenberger, the fullback, who fights for perhaps a yard, and that's about it. And I'm not even sure he got that much. The right side of the Perrysburg line in on the tackle, and the first man there was Jim Priest. Very, very short yardage. We'll give him a yard, Tom, from the 47 to the 46, make it second and nine. That time, uh, Jim Priest refused to be trapped and stuffed not only the, the uh, right guard trying to trap him, but also the ball carrier for a very short gain. 540 and counting, no score first quarter. They break out of it again, and out wide to the right goes... Stylus, he's joined out there by Rick Patton. Mark Patton in the backfield making up the I formation. Bennington, options down the line, he's down. Fumbles the football and recovered by Perrysburg. He never had an opportunity to pitch that ball back, Tom Gatto, and you've got the glasses on number 54 or 64, one of the other Tiggs, I believe. Dave Tiggs. Dave Tiggs, Dave Tiggs uh, recovered the fumble, but the hit came from Jim Trask. Defensive lineman, defensive well, tackle. So that's, that's a big turnover for Perrysburg as they'll take over on the plus side of the 50-yard line and uh, with outstanding field position again. All right, we'll make it the 49-yard line of Lake where it's first and 10. There's a wing left and a pitch back here to the short side of the field and not much running room here. 
Reese trying to turn the corner, but there wasn't much there at all, believe me. The left side of that line in on a big hurry for the Lake Flyers. And the first man there to get him was Todd Stylus. No gain. It'll be second down. Still 10 yards to go for Perrysburg at the 49-yard line of Lake. There's no score late in the first quarter. Back to runner throw the football. Sideline right. It is. Is it or isn't it? It's right in front of me, but I'm being blocked out by the Perrysburg bench. I believe he hung on, Tom. Yeah, fine catch. Uh, we were blocked out. The, uh, the official ruled a completion. So that will bring up a third and a little, little less than four yards to go for the first down. Roush really drilled it in there, believe me, and uh, we just couldn't tell whether or not the youngster hung on to it or not. But he did. Four minutes to go first quarter. They break out of it with a third down now and just about three to go. It's at the, let's call it the 43 of Lake. Wing right, a hand to the first man over the left side, and he's got the first down. Nichols, the ball carrier. Nichols, he was trapped up by the right side of that line, and the first man there was Sparks. That time, the they, that time they ran, they being Perrysburg, ran out of the slot to the short side of the field, ran power off tackle to the wide side. Uh, good blocking up front by Perrysburg. Good, good job by Nickel, who is starting in place of Kevin Reason this evening. First and ten at the 39-yard line of Lake. Perrysburg on the move. Option, pitch back. Nickel tries to turn the corner. He's swarmed out over there. Right along the line of scrimmage. Again, not much running room, and the first man there was Todd Stottis. He's in on the pitch out. Tackled by Henderson after a short game. It'll be second down and about eight yards to go. The ball resting outside the 35 at the 37-yard line. And back to throw the football, and a man is open. And it is complete inside the 30 at about the 25-yard line. Dennis on the reception. And on the tackle was Greenlease for Lake High, number eight. They'll spot the ball at the 36-yard line, make it the 26-yard line, where it's first and ten. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining first quarter. There's no score. Perrysburg on the attack. And again, a handoff to the very first man. And he tries to get it across the 25. And he gets it to maybe the 24-yard line. And that's all. The middle of that lake line in on the tackle. And the first man there was Emmett Rice. Key to the split six defense, Jerry, is the ability to blitz uh, with the outside linebacker to a lot of stunning inside. I think right now, Perrysburg is keeping Lake Flyers back on their heels with some of the movement of the offensive uh, backfield. Roush, the quarterback, second and about eight. Pitch again to the short side of the field and a little bit of running room this time. And running hard with that football is reason. And he's able to get it inside the 25 to about the 20-yard line where he is clamped down over here. And uh, getting his face right in that action was Mark Patton for Lake. And they're going to spot it at the 20-yard line where it is third down out about four. Third and about four. Nickel is in for reason at that tailback spot. Perrysburg on the move right now, and a big threat going on right now. Split backs. Roush barking out the signals. He's back to run and throw. A little pop pass. It is complete. A little look in. Fine reception by Heilman. Heilman, the wing back, was split out, Jerry, uh, in a spread formation. Ran a diagonal cut, just a look in pattern. A fine pass by Terry Roush because he threw to a spot. Heilman ran under the ball and picked up the first down right in front of the Lake defender. And that's outside the 10-yard line, so they can pick up another first down. It's at the 11. With a minute and 10 remaining in the first quarter, there's no score, but Perrysburg with a threat going right here. Split backs again, and Roush hands to his first man at the 11, to the 10, to the 9, to the 8-yard line. He got it to the 8-yard line, maybe the 7. I'll bring up a second down situation. One of the big problems that Perrysburg has been having uh, in this uh, very young season is the fact that they've been dropping the ball 
uh, having turnovers and the most inopportune times, which have set up winning touchdowns for their opponents. There's the big backfield into the five, and ooh, a good hit in there that time on the first man. I believe that was Priest running the ball. No, number 31 was running the football. That's Nickel. And he was hit by the left side of that lake line, and putting a shoulder into him was Ackenberger. 17 seconds to go, first quarter, no score, but Perrysburg now with a third down and five for the touchdown, third and four for the first down. And they'll line up in the wishbone tee. Roush gives it to Priest in there at the five, four, turns his back to the goal line. He's pushed back to about the four. He got it to maybe the two-yard line, so that's close to the first down. You're going to be a little short, though, Mike Baker, and that'll end the quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. Perrysburg nothing, Lake nothing. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Company open till midnight for teens. That's right. Due to popular demand, the Dixie will open its door every Sunday at 7 p.m. for teens only. And will stay open until 12 midnight. So now all you 12 to 18-year-olds can enjoy your favorite foods and non-alcoholic beverages. Play games in the Dixie's newly expanded game area. As well as dance to the best music in town from 7 till midnight. And don't forget about the Dixie's dance contest every Sunday night. The Dixie Electric Company also makes a big deal out of every one's birthday, so if you'd like to celebrate yours at the best party place in town, call the Dixie in advance to make reservations. So come plug yourself into teen night at Northwest Ohio's only entertainment utility, the Dixie Electric Company. Just come on in. Yeah, come on in. The Dixie Electric Company, located on Route 25 south of Perrysburg. Just for fun. The Dixie Electric Company. We get back to action now on a fourth down, and it is a keep uh, into the end zone for the score. He dives, reason, into the end zone for six. Nice bit of faking in there, Tom. Great job by Terry Rouse, uh, uh, riding Jim Reese, the fullback, into the lineup, into the line of scrimmage. Perrysburg had lined up in the uh, wishbone team. A good fake into the line, and Kevin Reason coming as the pitchman. Got the pitch from Roush. Dove the final two yards in for the score, and Perrysburg is on the board at this point, and Scott Stefanelli is trying to exit the point, and it's good. The score, Perrysburg 7, Lake nothing. And so just like that, there's another timeout on the field, and we'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. People are particular about eggs. That's why Kazmaier's five-star double-A great eggs are so popular. They're grated in candle and then rush directly to your Kazmaier market. The delicate, farm-fresh taste of double-A great eggs say quality. They're grated double-A because they meet the most exacting specifications and because they are Kazmaier's very own. These superior eggs are yours at thrifty Kazmaier prices. Naturally, each one is unconditionally guaranteed. That's Kazmaier's, your five-star food center in Perrysburg. Be sure to visit the new Kazmaier location at the crossroads of Heather Downs and Perrysburg Holland Road. If you are going to invest in an all-saver certificate, it's more convenient to come to any branch of Toledo Trust. Every Toledo Trust branch has all-savers hours, staying open Friday until 6 o'clock and Saturday until 2 p.m. For the convenience of those who wish to buy an all-saver certificate, every Toledo Trust branch will stay open until 6 on Friday and until 2 on Saturday. As with every certificate, there's a substantial interest penalty for early withdrawal. Take advantage of all-savers hours at Toledo Trust. Member FDIC. Perrysburg kicks off to Lake. Mark Patton gathers the ball in and rambles down to the Lake 34-yard line where they'll take over first and 10. And they have to get some points on the board because Perrysburg has drawn first blood here. Pennington, the quarterback now. At his own 34, and he pitches back here to Patton at the 35, at the 40, against the grain, and out to about the 43. And he is tried up here on this left corner by number 42, and that's Jimmy Priest. Excuse me, that is not a fly, that's an arm pad. A good pickup by Patton. Give him a pickup out to the 41-yard line. Second down, about three. I got a feeling uh, we're going to see Patton run that pitch sweep uh, quite a bit this evening, Jerry. Brad Cobb wide to the left, eye in the backfield. Cunnington, Mark Patton is back there. 
Hackenberger is the fullback, and he gets the call straight ahead out to the 45, to the 46, the 47-yard line, and he's hit, and he's brought down there again by Jim Priest. That time they faked the pitch sweep and handed off the fullback straight up the field, picked up the necessary yardage and more for the first down, and Blake is close to that 50-yard stripe. They're first and 10 on their own 47. They trail Lake does, 7 nothing. Ten and a half minutes to go in the half, and out wide to the left is Greenlease, number eight. Now we have a wishbone tee in the backfield. The Patton brothers are back there. Hackenberger's the fullback, and it goes to Patton, and he is hit and brought down in his own backfield. Excellent defensive play that time by Stan Dennis. Stan Dennis has been a tower of strength for these Yellow Jackets for three years. That time he refused to be taken out of the play. Blake tried to run isolation out of the uh, wishbone tee. Mark Patton saw he had nothing inside, tried to bounce it outside, and Stan Dennis brought him down for a yard loss. Second down, 11 to go, Lake at their own 46. Back to the I formation now. Open field is to the eastern side. Lake is moving left to right. There's a pitch back to Patton at the short side. 45 and hit it down to 47. Boy, they are certainly keying on Mark Patton. There's no doubt about that. On the tackle once again is Stan Dennis. Stan they try Dennis and also Glenn Schroeder in the middle guard. Good for suit, Jerry. And right now, Perrysburg is really flowing well to the ball. We should look for Lake to come back with some counteraction, uh, misdirection type plays. Back to the original line of scrimmage where it's third down and 10 at the Lake 47 yard line. They trail 7 0. Greenlee's out wide to the right now. They're back to the wishbone tee. Pennington, the quarterback. Let's see if he puts it up here. He fakes once, he fakes twice, he's back to throw. Sideline, kicked away. Nice defensive job. Very fine defensive play by Dennis again. He's been on three consecutive plays, Tom Gatto. From that time, uh, play action pattern by Lake did not fool Perrysburg. In fact, Stan Dennis, the uh, defensive end, had dropped off into the pass coverage scheme, and he just slapped that ball out of the air to the intended receiver. He, he came very close to intercepting it as well. Eight Back minutes. to punt for Lake will be Ken Oblinger. Deep to receive will be Reason and Nickel. Well, number 10, Stanford in there now on the far side. There's the snap, and they're coming. He gets it away. Good kick, by the way. Fine kick. Flag going to be roughing the kicker to the 20, to the 25, and then hit him down at about the 29-yard line. Well, if it is roughing the kicker, it'll be a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. That will give Lake a new life and a first down. You're going to get a roughing, Tom. And that will give them a first down at the Perrysburg 38-yard line, I believe, Jerry. Gene Richard and Son, Dixie Electric, Kazmaier Supermarket, Diamonds Menswear. Nice to have them along on our broadcast tonight here from Perrysburg High, Toledo Auto Electric. And they'll get set to walk off the penalty here now against the Jackets. They were coming. There was no doubt about that. They wanted to block that punt. And uh, they never got a piece of the ball, but they did get a piece of the punter's leg. And, Tom, you're right on it. They did uh, indeed pick up the penalty that moves the ball down to the 38-yard line of Perrysburg, where it's first and 10. So there's the first real big break in this football game. It goes toward late. Greenlee's out wide to the right. Let's see how they line up. They've either gone with the eye or the wishbone. They're in the wishbone right now. Pennington calling signals. 8.28 clock rolling. 7-0 Perrysburg. There is a fake. And back to throw. Deep downfield. A man is there. And it's tipped away. Nice defensive job back there. It was intended for Greenlee's. And... Brzezinski, 44. Slapped the ball out of the air, Jerry. But uh, i got to point out one thing. Uh, Tom Brzezinski will probably be told by his defensive backfield coach, slapped the ball down. That ball popped up in the air, and the offensive receiver had a shot at it. That would have been a big mistake, and that has happened to Perrysburg a couple times uh, this early season. Car now out wide to the right. It is second down and 10 late. At the 38 of Perrysburg, Lake trading 7-0. Pennington pitches here to Patton trying to get outside. 40 and down at the 35-yard line. That was um, 
Rick Patton that time, number 41. He was brought down by the right side of that uh, Perrysburg line. Stan Dennis again in there. Well, he's really played a heck of a game in this first half on defense. However, there's a pickup from the 38 to the 35 of about three yards. It'll be third and seven. 7.55 and rolling the clock. Twin flankers to the right now. Patton is joined by number 21, Tom McDaniels. The backs are split. Huntington calling signals. He drops back to throw. Look out for the screen pass. And he almost lost the football. And then he was decked. He was sacked back here. Fumbled, freezed on the sack. He fumbled the ball, and Perrysburg recovered, I believe. Glenn Schroeder recovered the ball. Well, that happened in a sequence of about three things there, Tom. He went back to throw the screen. The ball slipped out of his hand as he went to throw. It popped up in the air. It came down on the ground. He was sacked about the same time, and then it was fallen on by Perrysburg. You can't uh, elaborate is, more on that, Jerry. That, that was a uh, sad turn of events for Lake, but certainly uh, bolsters the confidence of this Perrysburg ball club. Going out to 49, and there is a hand of the first man of the 50, and Priest gets to the 49, a gain of two on the play. It'll be second down and eight yards to go. And on the tackle for Lake, Todd Stylus. He's played a good game on defense for the Flyers. So Perrysburg now with a second break in the game. A fumble recovery by Peberg, and of course the Flyers came up uh, on that penalty break on the attempted block punt and roughing the kicker. But that has uh, not hurt Perrysburg at this stage. Now let's see if they can capitalize on their break. They lead 7-0 with a second and eight. And he's back to throw the football. Rush looking, throws it deep down here, and it's incomplete, too tall. Defending on the play was Patton. It was intended for Keith Tamarine. Keith Tamarine. Number of sophomores starting for uh, Perrysburg uh, uh, in this ball club, uh, in this ball game, excuse me, Tamarine, a sophomore, Rehard, a sophomore, uh, Todd Hansen, a sophomore on the offensive line. Brzezinski is in and Priest out in the backfield for Perrysburg. Roush again has split backs with a third down, and he's back to throw the football. They're coming after him. There's a little screen. It's intercepted at the 45, at the 40, 35, 30, 25, and down at the 21-yard line. Did he not play that well? Sparks flow. He stepped right in front of the intended receiver. It looked as if it was going to be a completed pass, Tom Gatto. Boy, he just timed it beautifully. Harrisburg had the, uh, the tailback screen set up to the short side of the field. Earl Sparks just kind of laid back, read the whole thing. The ball was released. He ran right up and uh, snatched it right out of the air. And Lake will take over an outstanding field position on the Perrysburg 21. 6.25 to go in the first half. It is 7-0 in favor of the Jackets, but now Lake with a great break. They're second here in the ball game. High formation. Pennington calling signals to the short side. Patton pitch. 25 hit and down. Right there at the 21, the line of scrimmage. No game. Boy, they're doing quite a number on Pat. Sweet on the tackle. Clock running, 5.59 to go first half. Really looks like uh, Perrysburg has worked long and hard against that pitch sweep that uh, Lake has with Mark Patton carrying the football. Looks like well, student body right and student body left. They've tried it primarily, Tom, uh, to the short side of the field and have really picked up very little yardage. Lake has to the short side. They move out of it again. Five and a half minutes to go first half. They'll line up in the I formation this time. Out wide to the right is Tom McDaniels. Pennington barking out the signals. Open field left. He fakes in there and gives the... Oh, my gracious. Patton is decked back here at the 24. What an outstanding defensive job that time by Tom Carroll. Tom Carroll, the uh, wide side linebacker, uh, really was reading his keys very well. Saw the draw and shot the gap and stuffed uh, Mark Patton before he had a chance to get ahead of steam of going. And that's about a three-yard loss back to the 24-yard line, so it is now third down and 13. 458 and counting. That's all that's left here in the first half. Neither team has put it up too much here tonight. Again, out wide to the right is Greenlease. I'll tell you, Mr. Mark Patton is a marked man this evening. The backs are split. Pennington is sacked by the nose guard. 
He never had a chance, Tom Gatto. Oh, number 77 in there, or was it 87? Len Schroeder. Len Schroeder playing over that center. The center never found him. He was uh, on top of the quarterback Pennington before he was back three steps. He certainly was reading the ball very well. Emma Rejas, uh, junior center, really had no chance whatsoever to uh, protect his gap. With that, there's a timeout on the field with a score. Perrysburg, seven like nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Diamonds are a man's best friend. You heard right. Diamonds Men's Shop Super Summer Clearance Sale is a man's best friend. With savings of 20 to 50% on summer fashions, on summer basics, like men's selected shoes and jewelry, one half off, and Diamonds has sports shirts at great savings, too. And now's the time to fill in those gaps in your summer dress wardrobe. With savings up to 30% on selected suits and sport coats, you're not too late because Diamonds has a good selection to choose from, not just odds and ends. The Super Summer Clearance Sale at Diamonds Men's Shop in the Southwick Mall. New fall clothing is arriving daily, and Diamonds must clear their racks of summer merchandise. Don't be disappointed. Get in on those great buys at Diamonds Men's Shop. Come out today after the game. Shop tomorrow, but next week for sure. Diamonds Men's Shop in the Southwick Mall with clothes you want at 20 to 50% off, and suits and sport coats up to 30% off. Diamonds Men's Shop in the Southwick Mall. It's a gem of a clearance sale. Back to action on a fourth down and 19, and Pennington is back to throw the football. He finds Patton out of the backfield at the 25, at the 20, uh, to about the 19, 18-yard line, and he's all down. That time, Jerry, a uh, straight drop back by Pennington. No play action, obviously. A uh, definite passing situation. Mark Patton was setting the slot to the short side of the field. Ran a crossing panner. was wide open, but uh, was tripped up before he could get first down yardage. Perrysburg takes over. That's an excellent job on defense by the Jackets. First and ten for the Jackets. Let's call it the 17 and a hand to Priest over his left side. Got it out to about the 20. Give him a, about three yards on the play. Make it second down about seven. The right side of that uh, lake line and on the tackle. Three minutes and 45 seconds. That's all that is left here in this very fast-moving first half of football. It's only been a half an hour. And uh, well played, even though there's been two turnovers. Yep. Well played by both sides. They're wasting very little time, Tom. And, of course, they're not throwing the ball too much here this evening. 7 well, nothing. They are completing them. Peberg leading. Roush is the quarterback barking out the signals, and he's down in there tight, and he hands to his halfback coming outside at the fumbles of football. It's a loose ball scramble, and I believe Lake has it. Let's hold. Ackenberger, I believe, recovers for Lake here at the 25. Well, there was a situation where the back tried to switch hands while he was running, and in the midst of trying to switch hands, they got hit, a good lick, the ball popped up, squirted around, and Ackenberger came up with a fumble, and uh, Lake will take over on the Perrysburg 26. Well, they lose, six, they lose five yards in the exchange of turnovers. The Perrysburg defense going to be called on again. That's the 26-yard line now. They have split backs. Pennington again calling signals. He has open field up. He's back to throw on first down. He's in trouble. May scramble. 25, 20 to the sideline and out of bounds. Right around the 16-yard line. That may be enough for the first year. He is pushed out of bounds there by Priest. Also helping out was Brzezinski, and they're going to say right around the 16. Well, it was at the 26 time, and that's very close to the first down. They're going to 26 to the 16. I, I believe it's the first down. That time, uh, Perrysburg's containment broke down, and uh, the young man from Lake, the sophomore quarterback, Brian Pennington, broke that containment and skittered up the sideline and was knocked out uh, very close to the first down. does appear to me to be a first down. Oh, he's Just short by, by inches. Just yep. by air. Well, that's a pretty good position to be in, though. Second oh, yeah, down and in inches, you can do about anything here. Of course, uh, you've got you've got uh, about 15, 25 yards to work with if you want to throw a pass. And this would be a good situation for a play-action pass by Lake. Well, in with that play, Tom, is Tom McDaniels. Tom McDaniels and Todd Greenlease uh, alternate at split end, bringing in plays from Coach Jim Smith. 
So here's another golden opportunity for the Lake Flyers. They trail 7-0. They have 242 to go in the half. And they have it second in inches just outside the 15 of Perrysburg. Again, they're in the wishbone tee. Pennington is your quarterback. He's got the Patton brothers in there, and uh, Achenberger, of course, is the fullback, and he is uh, in the middle of that wishbone. Pennington calls, and he's back to throw. He's got time. He may run. He's in trouble now. Flag here, and he throws the ball in the air out of bounds. Well, now we may have a hold. There's a flag thrown right there where there is the hold. Pennington was trying to pick up a block. Priest was not to be denied. That will certainly put a crimp in Lake's plans here. Uh, obviously, Lake did not fool uh, Perrysburg with play action pass. Uh, obviously, if I knew it was coming, Perrysburg knew it was coming. And uh, that hold will really severely crimp uh, Lake's attempts to get in the end zone before the end of the first half. That'll take him back to the 30-yard line. 30, excuse me. 35. 35-yard line. Well, that really changes the complexion now. Remember, they had it second down, Lake, in inches. Second in inches uh, outside the 16. And now they've got a third, uh, pardon me, second down in a mile. Second about 20 at the 35. For Patton out wide to the right. Again, Pennington sets them down. They're in the eye. And he sticks it in there to Hockenberger. He's got five, six, seven yards maybe inside the 30 to about the 27. And he's tripped up in there by... I'll bring up a third and 12 situation, Jerry. Carroll on that tackle. An obvious passing situation for Lake. It'll be interesting to see if they go with play action or just straight drop back. Well, let's make it the 27, Tom, where it's third down now about 12 with a minute and 59 to go. They have twin flankers to the left. The ball is between the hash marks. And again, Pennington pitches backer to Pat. May have tailback pass coming up. He's in trouble. He's going to run 25. Cuts in at the 20, spins, and he's hit. He's down right around the 20-yard line. Again, fine defensive coverage and a good hustle to the ball by the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. Stan Dennis was the first man there to get him. It's right there at the 20 where it's fourth and about nine. That's the 25, pardon me. Again, uh, as you pointed out, Jerry, great secondary coverage by Perrysburg. Patton uh, really did not show a run. He was pass all the way, and he looked uh, to throw back. Uh, nothing was to the play side. Had he been able to uh, cut back against the grain, he might have picked up the first down, but good hustle by the Perrysburg defense brought him down. Again, twin flankers to the right. Here is a fourth down now, and nine at the 25. Pennington back to throw the football. Looking over the middle, it goes. It is incomplete, intended for Patton here at the 20-yard line, and Perrysburg is held again with 56 seconds to go to halftime. Well, what a job this defense has done. 7-0, Perrysburg leads it, and they've held again here. Tom, that was a very crucial second down call. Well, you know, you, you don't want to second guess because no. it certainly is a good, good play selection, but... The Perrysburg uh, did an outstanding job defensively to read the play action pass and come through with great penetration. Rosh hands off to his first man over the right side. Reese the ball carrier and he gets it out to about the 30 yard line, in the middle of the lake line, and on the tackle of the first one there is Tom McDaniel. Well, turnovers are two apiece now, Jerry. Fumble by Perrysburg, interception uh, by Lake, and uh, two fumble recoveries by Perrysburg. Neither team really uh, able to capitalize, I don't believe, on any of the... Uh, uh, or did Perrysburg... Perrysburg uh, recovered uh, a Pennington fumble on uh, the Lake 49 and drove it in from that point. That's right. the only... Really, Lake has had the opportunity to capitalize and have not been able to rise to the occasion. Give the credit to the Perrysburg defense for that. 44 seconds till halftime. We have a 7-0 game in favor of Perrysburg. A 
Uh, the ball is just shy of the 30. Let's make it the 29-yard line where it's second down now and about six. Perrysburg breaking out of it now. And they're in the I formation. Priest is in there at fullback. Roush pitches back here to his tailback at the 30. And ahead, Reason the ball carrier, and he is sacked here by Patton as he got it across the 30 to about the 32. And that'll bring up a third down and about uh, two yards to go for that first down. There is some good hitting out here on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Uh, very well played game uh, in terms of crispness. Time out on the field by Lake. Time out on the field with a score. Perrysburg 7, Lake nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Freedom of choice has arrived for car owners at TAE Service 18th and Monroe and Toledo Spring Service 11th and Washington. That's good news for you because freedom of choice means that you can get a maintenance-free Delco Freedom battery for less than you might expect to pay. The Delco Freedom battery is now available in four different series to fit your price and performance needs. There's the Freedom 30 for the value-conscious consumer who wants freedom on a budget, or the Tough Freedom 40, which fills replacement needs in most cars. Then the high-performance Freedom 50 for more demanding situations. And the top-of-the-line Freedom 60, our highest-capacity battery for quick starts in cold weather. The rugged Freedom 60 is great for cars with heavy accessory loads. Remember, whichever Freedom you choose, it's maintenance-free and never add water to a Delco Freedom battery. Come on in to TAE Service 18th and Monroe or Toledo Spring Service 11th at Washington and get great starts with a new Freedom battery. We get back to action here and a handoff again to Reason trying his right side and he is hit and pounded down. The line of scrimmage at about the 33-yard line. There's virtually little gain. Fourth down and maybe two yards to go. With two seconds, one second, that'll end the half. So, a very quick-moving first half of football here. That is the end of the first half with a score. The Perrysburg Yellow Jackets, seven of the Lake Flyers, nothing. We're at halftime here at Perrysburg High School with the score. The Perrysburg Yellow Jackets, seven. The Lake Flyers, nothing. And, Tom, that only gives you just the one score, obviously, to report here. And that came after a break. Well, Jerry, uh... Lake kicked off to Perrysburg. Perrysburg uh, took over with good field position after a fine run back. They started on their own 48. Could do nothing with it. Punt it to Lake. Lake took over on their 22. Moved the ball fairly well. Except on an option play, uh, Rick Pennington uh, for Lake uh, uh, got hit hard and, and fumbled. And Trask, uh, Jim Trask specifically, for Perrysburg, recovered on the uh, late 49. And Perrysburg mounted a fine drive from that point in and stuffed it in the end zone. The score coming on an option play and a fine pitch from Terry Roush to Kevin Reason, who dove over a tackler and a blocker, uh, final two yards for the score. Uh, the extra point was good by Scott Stefanelli, and the score at the end of, uh, well, that, that score came at 11.56 of the second quarter. In fact, it was the first, first play of the second quarter, and there has been no scoring since that point. We have had, since that time, uh, four turnovers. A uh, interception by Earl Sparks of the Lake Flyers of a uh, Terry Roush pass, and a fumble recovery by Ackenberg of a Kevin Reason fumble. And also, Glenn Schroeder has recovered a fumble, uh, another uh, Pennington fumble, and uh, again, giving Perrysburg outstanding field position, but again, the interception uh, stifled that Perrysburg drive. And of course, uh, uh, with Lake having the two fumbles, kind of stifling their offense, Perrysburg has had one good drive, but uh, turnovers really have been the key to the lack of both teams' offensive success in the first half. Defensively, some hard hitting, Jerry, some quick movement to the football. Both teams are moving very well to, to the uh, ball, and uh, it'll be an interesting second half. 
Seven nothing. That is the halftime score in favor of Perrysburg. And as the Lake uh, Flyer Band and the Perrysburg Yellow Jack Band perform for us here at halftime, we'll be back and continue with our halftime activities after we pause for this message. Your Kazmaier markets are eager to help you, eager to show you how very much they appreciate your loyalty and friendship. That's why the Kazmaier stock clerks are on the go every minute. They keep a watchful eye, rushing in new supplies to guarantee well-filled shelves and to keep things fresh and tidy. But Kazmaier personnel are never too busy to stop and help you find what you want to show you thrifty, wonderful specials. But the most important job at Kazmaier's is to please you. That's Kazmaier's in Perrysburg, your five-star food center. Be sure to visit the new Kazmaier's location at the crossroads of Heather Downs and Perrysburg Hollow Road. If you are going to invest in an All Saver certificate, it's more convenient to come to any branch of Toledo Trust. Every Toledo Trust branch has All Savers hours, staying open Friday until 6 o'clock and Saturday until 2 p.m. For the convenience of those who wish to buy an All Saver certificate, every Toledo Trust branch will stay open until 6 on Friday and until 2 on Saturday. As with every certificate, there's a substantial interest penalty for early withdrawal. Take advantage of All Savers hours at Toledo Trust. Member FDIC. Jerry, uh, common opponents uh, sometimes tell you something, sometimes it, it just tells you absolutely nothing. Comparative scores, uh, you may or may not be able to try to get a clue as to how teams are going to do. Uh, as we pointed out, Perrysburg opened up their season by beating Genoa and uh, beat them 14 to, to 7. And that's a good Genoa ball club. Genoa turns around and, and defeats Lake. In fact, shuts Lake out uh, uh, 20 to nothing. Uh, Eastwood, on the other hand, uh, gave Perrysburg his first loss uh, in uh, quite a few games. But uh, uh, Lake, on the other hand, was able to defeat uh, Eastwood. Uh, Lake has also beaten Woodmore and Anthony Wayne. Anthony Wayne uh, uh, has one win, and that's a big win over Whitmer, which surprised a lot of folks. Uh, we pointed out earlier, P Perrysburg had lost uh, a heartbreaker to Devilbus 15-14, uh, as well as losing to Eastwood 15-14. And uh, uh, we're in a real strong position with Springfield last week, but lost 14-7. to And again, that Springfield ball club is one that uh, I guess we're going to have to reckon with. They have been down the last couple of years, but it looks like uh, uh, they've got uh, things pretty well in hand. Uh, they, of course, defeated uh, a very strong Archbold team uh, back in, uh, on the 18th of September. Around the Northern Lakes League this evening, uh, Anthony Wayne is at Maumee, and that'll be interesting to see how that one comes out. Maumee, of course, uh, and Rossford uh, playing to a 0-0 tie last week while we were in North Carolina. Uh, Bowling Green is at Rossford. That's Rossford's homecoming. Cop Marquette was giving me the uh, lowdown on the homecoming activities there in Rossford this evening. Pennsylvania uh, Southfield, of course, uh, this evening is at Springfield. And uh, well, it will be uh, interesting to see how those ball clubs make out and see exactly how this NLL race will shape up in the weeks to come. Tom, when you take a look at it, you know, uh, one more game, and we're about at the halfway point of the season already. It doesn't seem possible, but, uh, of course, they moved it up a little bit earlier this year because of those playoffs, and this is, what, our fourth, fifth game into the season? Uh, fifth game of the uh, high school season, Jerry, and, and of course, uh, it, it seems like uh, summers get shorter and the uh, falls get longer. And, and, again, of course, the, the other thing is the fact that uh, they have had to move the season up and to expand the playoff situation at the end of the season. So that's what we're looking at, and that's the reason for the early games. The Perrysburg Marching Band coming on the field to perform. Lake High uh, just came off, did a splendid job, and uh, with about seven and a half minutes remaining until the start of the second half, the score is Perrysburg 7, Lake nothing, and we'll get back here with more activity at halftime after we pause for this message. Where can you party for five hours and find all kinds of great food, fantastic music, an unbelievable light show, games, contests, thousands of people to have fun with, and all for only three bucks? Well, if you don't know, then you've been missing out on the best teen party in town. Every Sunday is teen night at the Dixie Electric Company, and the party is waiting just for you. The Dixie stores will open at 7 p.m. to rock and roll for all you 12 to 18-year-olds until the magic hour of midnight. Don't forget the Dixie has all 
all the little extras that make a party special, including all sorts of non-alcoholic beverages. Teen Night also includes a Dixie Dance Contest where you can really show off. The only teen party in town gets plugged in every Sunday night at the Dixie Electric, and the only thing it's missing is you. The Dixie Electric Company is located on Route 25, just south of Perrysburg. It's easy to find. Just follow the crowd to the best party in town at the Dixie Electric Company. marching band. We thought you might enjoy some music and we hope you were able to get a little bit of the Lake High School marching band also. We're at halftime here as we near the uh, second half kickoff. 7-0 uh, in favor of Perrysburg over Lake and I think Tom hit it right on the nose. The turnovers of course both ways but there was heavy hitting throughout that entire first half and uh, there was no doubt about that Perrysburg uh, really were king on Mr. Patton. There's no doubt about that, Tom. Well, Jerry, the Perrysburg defense really came up with a couple outstanding uh, saves for their ball club. Uh, uh, Earl Sparks intercepted a pass on the Perrysburg 21-yard line, and uh, Perrysburg took over on their own 17 after stopping a late drive. Of course, uh, Perrysburg had a, a second and inches situation on the 16-yard uh, line and uh, tried a play-action pass for detected holding. And, of course, that really uh, pushed them back, uh, gave them a, a second and, and long at their own at the uh, Perrysburg 35. They were not able to rise above that penalty. When Ackenberger recovered a recent fumble on the Perrysburg 26, uh, Perrysburg again rose to the occasion and stopped that uh, drive uh, on their own 25-yard line. So uh, I, I just think that Perrysburg right now defensively has the upper hand. They seem to have the uh, intensity and the enthusiasm uh, that I guess a, a one and three team uh, would have against a three and one team. But uh, you know, you can throw the record books away, as they say, when Lake and Perrysburg, Maumee and Perrysburg get together, because they certainly have been uh, you know, outstanding opponents in, in uh, recent years. Lake, of course, uh, you know, two years ago came in here with a very strong football team, but decimated by injuries. Perrysburg, on the other hand, the last two years has, has been really the power of the Northern Lakes League. 
they are a little down this year in terms of experience. But Coach Chuck Pratt, uh, uh, I think we're going to see Lake uh, split them out a little bit more, try to get Mark Patton as well as Rick Patton out into uh, the, the flat areas, into the drag areas, and, and try to get him the football and spread that Perrysburg defense out. If Perrysburg can continue flowing to the football and penetrating, as they have, in fact, we pointed out Glenn Schroeder, the middle guard, beat the center to the snap. Uh, and again, he did so legally and uh, got the quarterback before he could take uh, two steps. And that's the kind of thing you got to have if you're going to uh, un untrack or derail uh, a high-flying express like the Lake Flyers. It's AJ's birthday, so I'll give him the ball at the game. Okay, uh, Tom, and we'd like to remind you, of course, we'll be on hand tomorrow night. Tom Gatto, yours truly, from uh, Glass Bowl Stadium. Between the University of Toledo Rockets and the Bobcats of Ohio University. We'll have it for you beginning at uh, 6.50 with our kickoff at 7.30 then tomorrow night. But, of course, we'd like to see you there. Supposedly, we're going to have a nice weekend weather-wise. Tom, it's going to be a little on the chilly side, but a lot of sun. But it is going to be cool. Supposedly, well, uh, are you uh, doubting the veracity of the weather folks? I would have liked to have seen a little more sunshine today than what they called for. Uh, they can't have everything. That's true, but we are supposed to have a lot of sunshine over the weekend, but on the nippy side, so you might dress accordingly uh, for tomorrow night's game at the Glass Bowl. A lot of halftime donuts being raffled off. It's kind of hard to keep track of everything going on here at Perrysburg. Gentlemen, uh, close to our crowd mic there, saying a few words. I'm sure the crowd mic has picked it up. Well, I didn't pick it up. Uh, must be because of the cold I'm featuring in CS. Well... But the show must go on. Anyone that would go out and play golf on a day like today, uh, probably, uh, in all likelihood, should come down with either walking pneumonia or cold. And I'm certainly glad it's just a cold and not walking pneumonia. Well, it could very well be, Jerry. you got to pay the price. Don't get too close, then. Tom, uh, I don't look for anything uh, too much different here in this second half. I expect both these clubs to come out and kind of sock it out. And uh, possibly, if anything at all, uh, we may see Lake do a little something differently on offense. You've got a, our good friend Tim Smith, the athletic yeah. director at Lake High School, uh, ask us to plug uh, the Lake Boosters Spaghetti Dinner, which is, in fact, the fourth annual spaghetti dinner, which will be held uh, Monday evening, October 19th, from 4 to 8 p.m., at Angelo's Spaghetti House. Now that's just a stone's throw from Lake High School, but uh, whether you're a Lake Booster or uh, or you're a booster of any school and you like good spaghetti, uh, we encourage you to uh, uh, get over to Angelo's Spaghetti House for the Lake Annual Spaghetti Dinner, October 19th, uh, from 4 to 8 p.m. And I'm sure, uh, Jerry, you'll be over there uh, getting some spaghetti because you're big when it comes to pasta. <laughs> that's that's outstanding, Tom. Uh, love spaghetti. Angelo's Spaghetti House on Stickney Avenue. Mr. Brown. All right. Over. Yes, yes. That's very close to Woodward High School. Yeah, the uh, the place where uh, Donald Ducky Lewis uh, yeah, is made infamous. Is uh, well, that was his uh, alma mater. And, of course, uh, my old friend Bob Bridger is the assistant principal over there. Uh, and I, I understand he's back coaching freshman football. He's probably got him in the eight and a gap and coming all the time. Well, he never could really get away from it. I thought he fell off the world. I, I hadn't heard from him in some time, but he's... Still well, over at, uh, at interesting Woody. thing, he never asked about you either. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Seven nothing is the score. Barrysburg on top. It was one of those defensive struggles along with the uh, errors on both squads uh, and Perrysburg was able to capitalize on one of the Lake Hires give them that 7-0 lead that was a, as Tom said, a 49 yard drive so Lake will take the kickoff here to start this second half reminding you this is WSPD Toledo 1370 on your dial, your station for sports tomorrow night Toledo, Ohio University Mid-Am Conference Warfare, Sam Shine. And 
company. Kicking off for Sammy. Perrysburg will be Rocco Manzo. Boy, that isn't a football name. I'll eat my hat. And deep to receive for Lake will be Mark Patton. And Patton is going to give away to the 15, to the 20, to the 25 and out. To about the 35-yard line, and let's give it to number 32, Chuck Stewart. Chuck Stewart stepped in front of Mark and, and brought the ball up to the uh, Lake 35, giving them a good field position. In fact, the best field position they've had to start an offensive drive. At the 35-yard line. And so Pennington will lead them up now at their own 35, Lake High. Patton out wide to the right. They're in the I formation. Again, open field is to the left. And he sticks it in there to Achenberger. And they go right back to the wall. And they go nowhere. Well, that's Jay Sweet and... Uh, and Tamarine number one was in there, too. Matt Cummings... Matt Cummings, the sting, stinger back or monster, was on a little blitz game inside and uh, tackled the fullback. Well, they still try to probe inside with Ackenberg and go outside with Pat, and they haven't really had any success the uh, entire football game. Second down and nine at the 36. He got a yard. They're down on the wishbone tee. They've been alternating between the eye and the wishbone. Pennington fakes him there once. He's back to throw. He's being flushed out on low sideline. Complete Patton. 40, 50, 45, 40. Still running it out of bounds. Well, finally got it to Patton in the open field. Now we look for that. I uh, mentioned that at halftime. If you get that young man in uh, some daylight, he is tough to bring down. He picked up the first down after taking that pass from Pennington. And Pennington was under duress, sprinting to his left. And uh, he is a left-handed thrower. Sweet on that tackle for Perrysburg, but now Lake with the ball at the 39-yard line of Perrysburg, where it is first and 10. We're in the third quarter. It is 7-0 Perrysburg. And he leads them out, and now open field is to their right or to the press box side here. They're in the wishbone tee again. And he gives to his second man, that is Patton, running the football. And Patton is inside the 40 at the 39 at the 38. And that's it. Second man through, tackled by Sweet. Schroeder on the tackle. Sweet also there. Give him about a yard. It'll be second and nine. And again, uh, Lake winding up in the wishbone uh, really kind of constricts itself. And I don't know if they can power it out against Perrysburg in that because they seem to have had more success running from the eye. And they continue in the wishbone tee. And Pennington sets him down. Again, open field to his right, and he's back to throw the football. Looking to Patton again, and it's overthrown this time at the 30. Overthrown. Defending on the play was Dennis. 9.54 to go. Third quarter, 7-0 Perrysburg. That time, Pennington uh, just had to release that ball a little bit uh, sooner than what he wanted. Didn't give Patton a chance to clear the linebackers. Lake huddling back here at the midfield stripe, and they break out of it now, and out wide to the right comes Greenlease. And again, they stay in that wishbone tee. Patton brothers are back there along with Ackenberger, and Pennington fakes once, and he's back to run or throw the football. He unloads it down here, and it's going to be intercepted almost. The person that had the best shot at it was a Peaberg Yellow Jacket. Number 4 0. That was Matt Cummings, Cummings, the monster back or stinger in the Perrysburg defensive scheme. He had the best shot at it, Tom. And again, Pennington threw that one up for grabs. He was running to his right, and as I pointed out, is a left handed thrower. And uh, there was a mix up in the backfield. That, again, was a play action pass on third and long. And the fullback uh, almost uh, was in motion. Back to do the punting, then, will be. Uplinger at the 48, and he gets a pretty good kick out of there. Hits around the 20. Ooh, takes a lake roll, and that's going to be a fine kick inside that 10 at about the 7. That's the 7-yard line. No run back. So Lake gets Perrysburg down in there deep. Ken Oblinger, the junior, 
Coral Lake uh, is the younger brother of Jay Oblinger, who played a lot of offensive and defensive tackle, and also did the punting for Coral Lake a couple years ago. This really uh, forces Perrysburg to uh, kind of pull in their horns a little bit, and and uh, they have to take another tuck in their belt to get it out of there. Rush, the quarterback, coming off his own seven-yard line, and he gives straight ahead in daylight. 15, 20, out to about the 23-yard line, and running high with the football that time was Nichols. Nichols, the ball carrier, right up the middle, time from the seven, out to about the 33. That time, Jerry, uh, running out of the power eye. Uh, looked like they had all the flow going to the left. He cut it back against the green to the right and picked up that uh, big first down that Perrysburg really needed. First and ten. That's the 23, not the 33. The 23. They're in the I formation. And to the tailback, Nichols again. And he's out to the 25 over his own left side. And he was tripped up by... Salter. So again from the 23 to the 25 of a couple of yards, it'll be second down. Eight yards to go for Perrysburg on their own 25, but they got out of a hole with that quick hitter right up the middle. Tamarine and uh, Reason in Thornton and uh, Heilman out. Seven nothing Perrysburg here in the third quarter and nearing the eight minute mark. Roush again has him in the eye formation. A pitch back here and cutting inside is the halfback, Reason. And Reason gets it out to about the 29, maybe the 30-yard line. On the tackle was Patton. And again, the pitch sweep out of the eye, which has been uh, Perrysburg bread and butter play for a number of years. Seems Perrysburg always comes up with a fine tailback. This time they have two of them, Reason and Nickel, both well, juniors. Third and three at the 30 now. Perrysburg 30-yard line, and they split their setbacks, and he's back to throw the football, looking sideline and lay out, almost intercepted. A little too high for the intended receiver, and also the man that almost intercepted, and that was Todd Stillis. Stylus. Earl Sparks is, uh, again, uh, has been doing an outstanding job. Uh, he was right in that area and slapped that ball out of the air. Patton will go deep. It is fourth down and three at the 30 of Perrysburg. And kicking for Perrysburg will be Dave Stanford. Inside the 20 at the 16. 7.39 to go third quarter. 7-0 Perrysburg, and he gets it away, and it's a high one, but not very far upfield. Hits at the 45, takes a Perrysburg roll, 50, 45, 40, and right there at the 40-yard line. So he got a good roll on it. He hit it straight up, hit out around the 48-yard line, and then rolled downfield toward the Lake goal line, so he got a break there. However, Lake will still take over time with good field position at their own 40. And again, uh, Perrysburg, uh, with that big first down, got themselves out of really tough field position and gave uh, Stanford a chance to get off a, a decent kick, uh, even though it wasn't a, a thing of beauty, and it did the job. And of course, there was a... Uh, a pickup of five yards on exchange of punts. Greenleaf's out wide to the right. They're in the wishbone. Pennington calling signals, and he's back to throw on first down. He's got snarly out, unloads it down here and over the head of Patton. Out at the 45-yard line. That time, he is getting heat. That time, Jerry, they tried to send Rick Patton out of his uh, setback position on a, on a circle route out of the backfield. Pennington uh, looked at this back all the way. And Perrysburg uh, secondary read it very well and was right in his hip pocket. Lake trying to keep Perrysburg a little more honest in this halftime. They're, now they're passing more on first down. They're trying to mix things up a little bit instead of going just to, to Patton or to Ackenberg uh, out of the uh, wishbone. Now they're behind. They've, they've got to get points on the board. Again, the wishbone tee from the 42nd and 10. There's the pitch to Patton at the 40 to the 41, and that's about it. Just nowhere to go. They're running Except at the sideline and uh, knocking him out of bounds, Tom, was uh, silent. They're running that uh, pitch sweep, Jerry, out of the wishbone into the boundary or the short side of the field because uh, they're really running away from the monster, Matt Cummings, who uh, plays to the wide side or the strength of the formation. Make it... Second and about Second eight. and about, yeah, eight oh, yards. Excuse me, eight, it's third, third down. Eight. Yeah, they, it's third down. They're a little slow on the update, boy. Third down, about eight. 
The initial line of scrimmage was the 40. It's about the 42. And back to throw the football is Pennington. Sideline left, and it's almost intercepted. There's been some fine secondary play by both these ball clubs, I want to tell you. That was Stan Dennis. Stan Dennis, defensive end. Uh, uh, read that. It was a kind of a hitch pattern, Jerry. Uh, out of uh, They broke the bone formation, gave us a slot to the wide side. Pennington looked to the wide side, threw back to the short side, to the tight end. And uh, Stan Dennis was there to slap it out of the air. Number 10 and number 26 deep for Perrysburg. That's Stanford and Heilman. And a line drive type of kick. Heilman may pick it up at the 30. He does. 35, 40, 43, and hit and brought down there. And on the tackle for the Lake Flyers... Randy Elvey. I'll tell you, Jerry, the uh, kicking game really is starting to take its toll here. J uh, Ken Oblinger has had a couple fine punts, but that time uh, one went off his, uh, his side of his foot, bounced right up into Heilman's hands, and he brings it back to the uh, Perrysburg 38-yard line, giving Perrysburg very good field position. First down and 10, 6.39, remaining third quarter. 7-0 Perrysburg leading. We had an injury timeout, yep. official timeout, and now we're ready to go. It's at the 43-yard line of Perrysburg. As you said, Tom, excellent field position here. Roush, your quarterback, in a double wing, and he has a man in motion to the left now, and he pitches back here to the short side. Priest, the ball carrier, hits the 45, the 50, the 49. Perrysburg's got a lot of mo going for him. Last time Silas here, on the tackle. You talked about man in motion. Uh, we had a slot to the short side. They sent uh, Stan Dennis, the tight end, in motion to the short side. So it was really a power formation to run that short side sweep. And, uh, and pitching to the fullback, picked up uh, almost eight yards. Let's call it second down and two at the 49-yard line of Lake. Roush leads him out once again. Power eye in the backfield and to the tailback over the right side and hit and uh, finally down back here for a loss at the 46-yard line. No running room that time for Nichols. That time Nichols tried to bounce it outside, but he was caught in a uh, Lake Flyer blitz. Uh, all four linebackers were coming at that point, and he could not elude them, and that's a loss. And I'll bring up a third and about seven situation for Perrysburg. It's up to 46 now, Peaberg. 5-23 to go third quarter. And counting. 7-0 in favor of the Jackets. They break out of it again into a slot left. The ball is on the far hash mark, the eastern side. Man in motion to the right. Rush to the short side to throw a run. In trouble. Sacked. Back here at the 43. Good defensive play back there by Jim Slater and Earl Sparks. All right, that'll bring up a fourth down. Outstanding job for Lake. Well, these two teams just keep banging at each other, Tom. Neither one unable to really get anything sustained going here. And quite honestly, uh, both uh, uh, both teams have been playing wide open football for the most part, trying to throw the ball in first down, second down, as well as the obvious, obvious passing situation. Patton deep. Punt from the 30-yard line. And pretty good kick out of there. Patton may get a run back here now. Try and get outside. Needs a block. 35, 40, 45, and out to the 49-yard line. Pretty good run back. That time, Stanford out kicked his coverage with that line drive punt. And boy, when you give a guy like Patton uh, room to run, he's awful dangerous. He's dangerous without room to run. Shorter on the tackle, Tom. Lake will take over on uh, their own. I said 49. That's 43. Yeah, it's 43. Sometimes the yard markers are a bit tough to pick up. Uh, they have those little tents along the sideline, but a lot of times the players get in front of them or they're knocked over. So that is the 43. Wishbone T. Pennington pitches back here to Patton, cuts it inside and down. Whoa! Fine defensive play that time by Swede. John Swede, who is now a senior, and uh, he's a th three-year starter. He started as a sophomore, along with his brothers uh, Jace and uh, 
John, uh, John, I believe you're right. Oh, that is John. It's Jace, uh, J, Jace, and John. Right. Yeah. The brother of Swede. <laughs> a loss of a yard. Second and 11. Let's call it now the 42-yard line of leg. Again, the wishbone tee with open field left or the east side. There's Patton up the middle and a little trap play or indirect play out to the 45. Didn't get much. Sweet again. Sweet again. Again, good job by John Sweet, the linebacker, reading that trap. Uh, he stepped right up in the hole and brought Mark Patton down. Third and eight. They have... Perrysburg defensively is really putting on a heck of a defensive clinic here this evening. I hope I don't jinx it for them. 7-0, Perrysburg leading the Lake Flyers in a defensive struggle here tonight. Last week we had the Rossford guys, nothing, nothing. You want to talk about a defensive battle? And on the other hand, Lake has been playing good offensive football. High formation. He's back to throw. No, the draw. Patton is hit out over the 45 to about the 47 or 8. And again, Swede on three consecutive plays. Swede is there. Well, Patton gets that head steam going. I'll tell you, he's tough to bring down. But so far, Perrysburg, for the most part, have contained him. He's gotten off... Uh, a couple of pretty good runs. One here in the third quarter, Patton has, but uh, he's found a couple passes. Yes, he's caught a couple passes, uh, but he's found, uh, for the most part, it very rough going here this evening. Snap, punt is in the air. Good high kick, good hang time on this one. Coming up to meet it and lick out Heilman. He makes the reception out around the 24. No run back. First and 10 for Perrysburg with a minute and 40. That's all that's left here in the third quarter. Those are some of the mistakes that uh, Perrysburg has been making, Jerry. Uh, that situation, uh, the, the deep receivers for Perrysburg should have signaled fair catch and really took a real chance there. They'll take over on their own 29-yard line, they being Perrysburg. Tom, that's the 24. I know they're hard to pick out sometimes. They You're get, right. They get knocked down, and here is the handoff in there to the first man over the right side, and that's uh, Nichols, the ball carrier, and he is slammed down by the left side of that lake line. I want to tell you, they closed that down in a big, big hurry. And the first man there to get him was Steve Horniak. Defensively, Lake has really come to play in the second half. They, uh, they've kind of, they have shut down Perrysburg uh, very well here. I was playing with their split six defense. Second down, 10 at the 24 of Perrysburg. They're in the I formation now. Roush calling signals. And he keeps, pitches back. Oh, almost a bad pitch here. Trying to get outside is recent. At the 25 into the 30-yard line, and he's hit and dropped there. That was the same play they scored the touchdown. Ooh, Jerry. That was option. close. The option with counteraction by the wingback coming back to the quarterback. Well, it looks a little bit like a Chinese fire drill, but really uh, louses up the uh, linebacker's keys. Well, it's third down and five now. The ball just up over the 30-yard line, about the 31. So here it is. Third and about five. There's a pitch back. Trying to turn the corner, and he cannot do it. The reason, once again, or pardon me, Nichols uh, trying to turn the corner, and it just wasn't there. McDaniels on the tackle for Lake. It'll be a punting situation. Fourth and about four at the, uh, well, let me get the 31. And that's the quarter. So that's the end of the third quarter with a score. Perrysburg, seven, Lake. Nothing will be back with the final stanza in a moment. If you are going to invest in an All Saver certificate, it's more convenient to come to any branch of Toledo Trust. Every Toledo Trust branch has All Savers hours, staying open Friday until 6 o'clock and Saturday until 2 p.m. For the convenience of those who wish to buy an All Saver certificate, every Toledo Trust branch will stay open until 6 on Friday and until 2 on Saturday. As with every certificate, there's a substantial interest penalty for early withdrawal. Take advantage of All Savers hours at Toledo Trust. Member FDIC. What a happy experience good eating can be when you enjoy the wonderfully fresh produce from your Kazmaier markets. See the bloom on the fruits and the crispness of Kazmaier vegetables. Check the fragrance and the plump firmness that says fresh picked. Above all, savor their delicious fresh flavor. And all this freshness, top quality, and abundant choice are yours at the true budget prices from Kazmaier's Market in Perrysburg, your five-star food center. Be sure to visit the new Kazmaier's location at the crossroads of Heather Downs and Perrysburg Holland Road. 
And we start the fourth quarter now at Perrysburg High, and there is the punt going down to Patton at the 40, out to the 45, and hit and brought down there. Jerry, we've had uh, six punts so far in the second half. Uh, Lake uh, has taken over on the 35, the 40, the 43, and now this is their best field position so far in the ball game, uh, taking over on their 45 uh, on their side of the 50-yard uh, line. And they're moving now right to left, and uh, the short side is to the eastern side, and it goes to Patton at the 45, out to the 49-yard line, and he's drugged down there. And now the tackle for the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets was Schroeder. Pretty good pickup on the play from the 45 out to the 49. Again, a four, it'll be second and six. I might point out in the first half that Lake did take over on the Perrysburg 21 and 26 after uh, intercepting a pass and also recovering a fumble. So they have had a real good field position down deep in Perrysburg territory. But this is the best field position they have had in the second half. 10.59, the clock is rolling. 7-0 Perrysburg. They have led since back early in this football game. 11.56 in the second quarter. Again, open field left. The backs are split. It goes to Patton on the counter to the 50 to the 49. That'll bring up third down in about four. Third and about four on the tackle. Pornyak, number 50. And again, Carrizo over his own right tackle. In the 40-yard line. Pennington. Mark Patton in there. Hockenberger and Mark Patton. It is third down, about four. And the clock, of course, moving along, 10-13. That's all the time remaining. Now, Patton out wide to the left. That's Rick Patton. Mark Patton will stay at the tailback. Hockenberger's the fullback, and it goes to Patton at the 50, and down! There it is, Swede. Swede. Very nice. That'll bring up fourth down, still about fourth, the 49. 48 and a half, right in that area. That time, Jerry, again, uh, Lake trying to run that uh, tailback pitch sweep to the short side of the field. And they're lining it, Mark Patton up seven to eight yards deep in the backfield. And that gave uh, John Sweet a chance to read that very well. He came up and met him on uh, Lake's side of the line of scrimmage. Punting situation now, back at the 39. Oblinger to punt for Lake, uh, deep for... Uh, Perrysburg, Reason, and Heilman. Oh, there's a poor kick, Tom. 35, reverse roll, dead there at the 35. That's not a very good kick. So Perrysburg has the lead 7-0, and they also have the football in pretty decent field position at their own 36-yard line maker. It was down right there. 9-13 left in the game. That's all the time we have. This game has just really moved right along. There has not been too many here in the fourth quarter. Not been too many penalties in this game tonight. Uh, all right, let's see what Perrysburg does this time with a 7-0 lead in the ball of their own 36. They've got it in the eye. Roush is the quarterback. He gives to his fullback straight ahead, and he's got a couple of yards. That's Priest, the ball carrier. He just fell over a lot of people laying down there, Tom. Actually, we'll give credit to the closest man to him, Mike Baker, number 62. But actually, Priest just kind of stumbled and rolled over the top of people from the 36 out to the 39 to gain a three. It'll be second down and seven. 8.35. And counting here in this fourth quarter. 7 0 Perrysburg. Nothing real fancy in this one tonight. There's a slot left and back to there is a little inside handoff, but boy, I'll tell you, Lake smelt that one coming. That was an inside handoff to Heilman from the slot position. But uh, Lake kind of smelt that one out, Tom. And uh, Baker again there on the tackle, also helping out, was number seven, Rick Ackenberger. So as a matter of fact, he lost on the play uh, back to about the 37-yard line. Lost a couple of yards. Third down, about eight yards to go. Uh, Lake's doing a lot more blitzing in this uh, second half. Backs are split. Here's that third down. He's back to throw. Roush is lick out. He gets away from one man. Another man at the 30. 35. And Simpson goes down right around the 39-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. Went down under his own power. That time they sent the uh, outside linebacker, McDaniels. Uh, Roush was able to elude him. Uh, he decided to run with the football and only gained about two yards with all that effort. Well, we're nearing the seven-minute mark, 7-0 Perrysburg. 
Stanton is deep. And Stanford to kick for Perrysburg. The up man is Greenleys. Ooh, high snap, but he gets the kick away. Pretty good kick, kind of a low one at the 28, 30. Trying to get outside, 35 at the 40. Patton at the 45, Patton at the 50 and down. At the 50-yard line. He'll give you a thrill, I'll tell you, Patton will. And a man down for Lake. There's an injured player, so a timeout on the field with a score. Perrysburg, seven leg. Nothing, let's pause for a moment. Back in 1941, when you weren't in the mood to dance, then you were probably out admiring your new DeSoto and the good set of tires you got for it at Gene Richards' new tire shop in Toledo. You know, a lot of people started out with Gene Richard and have stayed with it because they knew they didn't have to worry about getting good service from Gene, and you didn't have to worry too much about gas savings then either. Well, today it's Gene Richard and Sons Tire at 21st and Monroe Streets, and today you do have to save fuel. While Gene and his sons don't have any hard and fast solutions to America's energy problems, you can equip your car with quality Michelin X radial tires, performance-proven tires that can help you save 5 to 8% on fuel over bias ply tires depending on the way you drive. Michelin's America's Choice for tire value, and Gene Richard & Sons has fuel-saving Michelin's in stock at prices you can afford. Gene Richard & Sons Tire. Leave your car, and they'll take you to and from work. For Michelin's, it's Gene Richard & Sons Tire. 21st and Monroe Streets. And again, Jerry, uh, Lake Flyers continue on exchange of punts, moving closer to the Perrysburg goal line. They'll take over on the 50-yard line, and uh, in five exchanges, they've moved steadily from the 35 to the 50. Uh, you've got to feel that sooner or later something's going to snap here, and, and Lake's going to get some, some points. Pennington barking out the signals now at the midfield stripe. 6.59 remaining in the football game, and he pitches back here. Watch out for the tailback pass, and here it comes from Patton. Goes it high and deep, and it is intercepted. Intercepted inside the 30 at about the 28. He just threw it up for grabs. Tamarine. Looks like Keith Tamarine. Tamarine, I believe, intercepted. Keith Tamarine, the free safety, uh, was not uh, fooled at, at all by Mark Patton's tailback cross-country pass. And that's another turnover uh, brought about by fine defensive play and a poorly thrown pass by Lake. It's at the 29-yard line of Perrysburg, Roush, and we have a legal procedure by the left side of the Perrysburg line. Henson moved prematurely. That'll be a five-yard walk-off and make it first and 15. So from the 29, back to the 24, 619 left in the game. We want to thank our sponsors, Cashmere's Supermarket, Dixie Electric Company, The Open Pantry, Toledo Trust, Gene Richards and Son, Diamonds Menswear, nice to have them along with us uh, this evening on the broadcast, Toledo Electric, Toledo Auto Electric. Harrisburg has to be careful here. They, they yep. would uh, give Lake a... Uh, turnover that they do not want. There's a hole over the right side. Against the grain, trying to run with that football is Nichols, and Nichols gets it across the 25 to the 30, and out here to about the 35-yard line before he's finally brought down. Pretty good bit of running that time. As a matter of fact, he got quite a bit of that yardage back and then some. That would bring up a second down and about four to go. Good individual effort by uh, Nichols uh, as he uh, did have some good upfront blocking cut back against the grain, picked up additional yardage. Hackenberger finally brought him down on the secondary, so here it is, second down at about four at the 35 of Perrysburg. Pitch back. Running hard. 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, and out of bounds. Kevin Reason turned the corner on the Lake Flyers that time, and there's the best run from scrimmage for the Jackets. And again, that, that's the counter option with... Uh, Misdirection by Perrysburg. Wingback coming back against the grain. Quarterback going uh, to the wide side. Good pitch. Patton finally brought him down. Timeout for a player injury. So a timeout on the field with a score. Perrysburg 7, Lake nothing. Let's pause for a moment. We care about your shopping needs every single day. We care about good quality.
Coke and Pantry cares about saving you money, too. Like this great buy. Coke, Sprite, or Tab in the eight-pack of half-liter returnable bottles. Just $1.59 plus deposit. And Open Pantry's deli special is their delicious Honey Nut Boiled Ham. Now just $2.29 a pound. From the convenient Open Pantry store near you. We get back to action now on a straight handoff. Running over the right side is Nichols, and he gets it inside the 35 to about the 32-yard line. And he is brought down there by Mike Baker. Again, this one-two punch of Rick Nichol and uh, Kevin Reeson uh, really have come to light here in the uh, fourth quarter. Moving the ball very well behind fine blocking by the Perrysburg line. All right, it's second down at about seven now. Roush again uh, keeps it, pitches back here. Inside at the 25, at the 20, still running hard with the football is Reason again. And he's finally brought down by Baker, and now the momentum certainly going toward Perrysburg here. It's inside the 20-yard line at, well, let's make it the 19, 444 remaining in the football game. Perrysburg leading 7-0, and now a timeout by Lake. So another timeout on the field with a score. Perrysburg 7, Lake nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Extra, extra, read all about it. Dixie Electric Company open till midnight for teens. That's right. Due to popular demand, the Dixie will open its door every Sunday at 7 p.m. for teens only. And will stay open until 12 midnight. So now all you 12 to 18-year-olds can enjoy your favorite foods and non-alcoholic beverages. Play games in the Dixie's newly expanded game area. As well as dance to the best music in town from 7 till midnight. And don't forget about the Dixie's dance contest every Sunday night. The Dixie Electric Company also makes a big deal out of everyone's birthday, so if you'd like to celebrate yours at the best party place in town, call the Dixie in advance to make reservations. So come plug yourself into teen night at Northwest Ohio's only entertainment utility, the Dixie Electric Company. Come on in. Yeah, come on in. Dixie Electric Company, located on Route 25 south of Perrysburg. Just for fun. The Dixie Electric Company. Okay, another first down for Perrysburg. All right. First and ten then for the Jackets. Roush calling signals. We'll call it the 19 of Lake. They're in the pie of the backfield. And a long count here, and he gives to his tailback uh, at the 19 and hit and brought down there. And that's Nichols, the ball carrier. And virtually little gain. He might have gotten a yard on the play. Give credit on the tackle to number 81, Todd Stylus. Tackled by Henderson. He got a yard. Make it second down and nine at the 18th. 420 and counting, Perrysburg leading 7-0, and they have the football. They're in great shape right now. They really are. Splitbacks with open field here to the press box side. There's the quarterback draw. He's hit from behind and brought down. He got about a yard, and that's it. It'll bring up a third down and about eight. And on the tackle again for the Lake Flyers is number 65, Earl Sparks. Even keeping straight ahead for about a yard. So third down about eight. The 17 yard line. 349. Perrysburg, of course, does not want to make a, a big mistake here, Tom. Uh, they've got the 7 0 lead. I don't think that would uh, prevent them from going up top, Victor. And he is going up on top, and it is incomplete. Tipped away by Marty Patton. And again, it's intended the intended for Carroll. Slant pattern to Kent Tamarine. Uh, just for out. Uh, Passed his outstretched hands. Could have been a first down and more if had to been able to gather it in. Fourth down. And about eight yards to go with the ball resting at the 17. They take a timeout. Clock has stopped. I don't know if they have or not. No. And they might have. Well, the clock has stopped. Take a timeout. Now they're going to have to take a timeout. Timeout on the field with a score of Perrysburg 7 Lake nothing. And we'll be back here with the final minutes of play after this timeout. 
When your meals depend on meat, you can depend on Kaz Meyers for the meat that's tender, delicious, and well-trimmed. Kaz Meyers quality control begins with extremely careful selection of meats. Only the best corn-fed U.S. top choice and prime grades of hanging steer beef are chosen, nothing else. Every pound is carefully trimmed before weighing to make sure you get more for every penny you spend. You just can't help picking a perfect piece of meat, even blindfolded. That's Kaz Meyers in Perrysburg, your five-star food center. Be sure to visit the new Kaz Meyers location at the crossroads of Heather Downs and Perrysburg Holland Road. If you are going to invest in an all-saver certificate, it's more convenient to come to any branch of Toledo Trust. Every Toledo Trust branch has all-savers hours, staying open Friday until 6 o'clock and Saturday until 2 p.m. For the convenience of those who wish to buy an all-saver certificate, every Toledo Trust branch will stay open until 6 on Friday and until 2 on Saturday. As with every certificate, there's a substantial interest penalty for early withdrawal. Take advantage of all-savers hours at Toledo Trust. Member FDIC. The final three minutes and 33 seconds of play coming your way then. And here is a fourth down, about eight to go at the 17-yard line. And Perrysburg going to run it out here now. Roush calling signals, and he fakes. Pitch back. And trying to turn that corner at the 15 and out of bounds, perhaps. Maybe he didn't get out of bounds. It was Reason over there across the far side. and Not enough for the first no, down. No, not enough for the first down. And so 325 left on the clock. And uh, they've got a monumental task ahead of them. The ball is resting at the 15-yard line of Lake. They've got a long way to go. Three minutes and 25 seconds left in this game. At the time, Perry's Bird went back to the uh, options, option pitch. Uh, was able to pick up some yardage, but not enough for the first down. The clock is running as we near the three-minute mark. 7-0 Perrysburg. Lake has it. They're moving right to left at their own 15-yard line. Pennington, the quarterback. Let's see if he comes out throwing here. He's back to throw at the five. He does throw to Patton, and he is hit. And he is brought down around the seven-yard line, pushed all the way back to about the four-yard line. And I'll tell you, they have been well scouted. Tiggs there to make the grab. Patton out of the backfield, made the reception right around the seven-yard line. But remember, the initial line of scrimmage was the 15. Jerry, they set up the oh. screen very well, they being late. But uh, they forgot to tell Dave Tiggis that he was supposed to be rushing the quarterback. He was laying in wait. As soon as Mark Patton caught the ball, he was right in his hip pocket. 7 nothing. the Jackets on their way to uh, somewhat of an upset here tonight. I would say that Lake probably was favored coming in. It is second down and long at the seven-yard line, and they draw a play. Patton is hit at the seven-yard line, and that's all. That is all. Dennis on the tackle. Two minutes and counting. A minute and 59. Lake, I believe, is in big trouble now. Seven-nothing. They trail. They have a third down and about 17 to go for that first down, and the ball is at their own seven-yard line, so things really don't look very good. These are the situations where Perrysburg really has to be prepared for any possibility, a screen, the draw, any type of trick play. They don't want to give a, a big yardage in this situation. Pennington has in the eye formation. Ockenberger is the fullback. Patton is their tailback. Open field to the left. We'll keep an eye on Pennington here, and he, oh, mix up in the backfield, and Pennington recovers in the end zone. It's a safety. Safety. And there was a mix to covering Pennington to number 54, Tiggis, and number 84, Stan Dennis, the defensive end. What happened was that uh, the quarterback, Pennington, ran into Patton on the exchange, and it's a safety, and of course, uh, that makes the score 9 to nothing now in favor of Perrysburg, and, uh, and now Lake will have to free kick it, either cut it or kick off as you would start a game. And that just about sealed the coffin here, put the final nail in that coffin for the Lake Flyers, I believe. So Lake will now kick the ball, either, as I said, by punt, or as you would do, kick off to start a football game. We only have a minute and 19 seconds remaining. And let's see what Lake's going to do. Now, normally, uh, the punt is uh, chosen by most teams in this situation because the punter obviously can hang the ball, giving much better coverage than a kickoff. They are going to punt it. 
Ken Oblinger to do the punting. And his reason, Nickel and uh, Priest. From his own 15, here's the walk up and uh, gets a leg into it at the 45 yard line to the near sidelines at the 50 to the 46 yard line and down he goes. That's number 40. That's coming first and 10. He slipped and went down under his own power. The ball is at the uh, 47 yard line of Lake where it's first and 10. Nine nothing, Perrysburg leads it and the clock begins to wind. With a minute and 11, a minute and 10 and counting. Time for a couple of plays, and Perrysburg should be in no hurry now because they've got this one iced. They should be in no real hurry at all. They come out in the wishbone. Arch the quarterback might even just fall down and not even risk the exchange. He's taking the long count. Yep, just quarterback sneak straight ahead and inside the 45 to the 44, 43, maybe the 42. And on the tackle for Lake High School is Ackenberger. So there's a pickup on the play of maybe five. It'll be second at about five with 37 and counting. They may not even, they'll probably just about get this play underway and that'll be it. Jerry, uh, Lake has not defeated uh, uh, Perrysburg here at Perrysburg in 10 years and they have not defeated. Uh, won a ball game from Perrysburg, I think now in four tries in the last four years. 18-17 and counting, and again, Roush will more than likely just take it and go straight ahead, and down he goes at the 40-yard line. On the tackle, Schaefer with eight. That'll do it. Hear the crowd. They love it. We hope you've enjoyed this one tonight. Two seconds, one second, and it's all over. Perrysburg has upset the Lake Flyers here this evening by the score of 9 to nothing. And, Tom, that one touchdown came back in the second quarter. Touchdown uh, came at the first play of the second quarter, Jerry. 11.56 on the clock after a fumble recovery by Jim Trask. Uh, Perrysburg moved from the Lake 49 to the five-yard line, uh, excuse me, the two-yard line, and on an option run and pitch, uh, Kevin Reason dove the final two yards for a touchdown. Uh, Stefanelli's kick was good at that time, and the score was seven to nothing. Uh, the next points were put on the board just a few short minutes ago, 119 of the fourth quarter, when uh, Rick Pennington of the Lake Flyers ran into his running back, Mark Patton, the ball squirted back into the end zone, and uh, Pennington covered the ball in the end zone, uh, and Perrysburg was given credit for a safety. So the final score, Perrysburg Yellow Jackets 9, Lake Flyers nothing. Our thanks to Tom Gatto and the folks here at Perrysburg High for making our stay pleasant as always. And a fine football game, both teams, Perrysburg coming out on top, 9 to nothing. For Tom, Jerry Kyle, then join us tomorrow night. Toledo and Ohio U from the Glass Bowl, 6.50, our pregame programming kickoff at 7.30. Have a good night, and from Perrysburg High School, so long for now. You are a promise, you are a possibility, you are a promise, you're a promise, a promise with a capital P. You're a great big bundle, a great big bundle of, of potentiality. You are a possibility, you are a promise, with the capital P. You are a great big bundle of potentiality. And if you listen, you will hear God's voice and it